Hello and welcome to Political News, Political Views. My name is David Lillis. I'm going solo tonight, um, unfortunately. I, I like to have a partner here so I have someone to argue with. Um, again, as the show is uh, no teleprompters, no cue cards, no idiot boards, just ad lib drips from my head. So, starting off, it's been a busy week. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw uh, President Biden give his speech, but finally, finally, we are in a mess, a huge mess. Uh, I haven't really talked much about the state government. Um, my former partner, uh, Todd, and uh, I want to say Todd's a great guy. I like him. But... Um, he got caught up in the bullshit. Since January 6th committee has come out, the evidence that has been presented is astounding. And it's, it's almost unbelievable what has been said. We now, because when it happened, I had told some of my coworkers that January 6th, something's going down. But of course, Trump forewarned us that something was going down. And then, of course, Steve Bannon added to it because he was in on it. So he wasn't just talking out of his ass like he usually does. He basically said, um, it's going to be wild. Like nothing you've ever seen, it's going to be wild. And damned if it wasn't. When it was going down, I, I just thought, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. It, it, it was plausible, but it, it just, there had to be missing pieces. Well, now they can go all the way back into September when a lot of this stuff started. And that, as a matter of fact, you can go into April when uh, Trump planted the seed. That was right in the middle of COVID. He was more worried about being reelected. And a lot of people want to know why he wanted to be reelected. Well, there were several reasons. One was he had so many lawsuits against him. And Bill Barr, who illegally did this, he, he, he finagled the law so that Trump couldn't be sued because he said you can't sue an incumbent president. Well, that's not entirely true, but they got away with it because they were working in tandem. And uh, the other part was Trump found that he was making a lot of money. Now, the one thing that Trump did that um, happened on uh, the first week, he told Rance Priebus, who was his uh, um, secretary, uh, wait a minute, uh, his uh, manager, he was head of the RNC. Uh, it escapes me his position right now. However, he told him, all you have to do every day is treat each day like a new episode of a reality show. And I've said this before. My life is not your goddamn reality show. All politicians, Democrat, Republican, Independent, I don't care what you are. Your purpose in going into government is to make the lives of the people better. We the people are the ones you work for, not we the Trump or we the maggots. And I've used that term, those are maggots. I, you know, I don't know how people have missed that all this time. They keep calling them magas. There's no such thing as a maga. They are maggots. The plural of maga is maggot. Okay? So we got that straight. But the thing is, and I, and I can do this from experience because I did run. You run on behalf of the people that you're representing. You're not running as their king or their leader. You are not their leader. You are their representative. You are are responsible and accountable for casting the vote on their behalf, not who gives you the most amount of money. Now, one reason I bring this up is because um, something happened this week that has really caught my eye. The Republican Party 
got $1.6 billion in dark money. Now, I say that because that's a lot of damn money. It, it, it really amazes me how people talk about gas prices are high, I don't have enough money to live on, I can't do this, I can't. and then they send this, they send their paycheck to Trump. And it's already been established and proven that Trump has taken that money and he's putting it in his pocket and he's spreading it out to his family. Now, the way he does that is he has them work for him. Or he puts an office in his tower and then he charges himself and he withdraws the money. Right now he's doing that with one of his uh, super PACs. There's an empty office building or empty office space in Trump Tower that the Republicans are paying for. And there's nothing there. This is how we learned to siphon money. He started that right at the beginning. He charged, he raised the rates of his own building four times and then paid himself. But the amazing part was he said that he was not taking any money from everyone. I'm rich and I'm going to pay for it all. Well, several things. One, he isn't as rich as he says he is. He does have some money, a lot more than I do, which that ain't saying a whole lot, probably a lot more than most of you. But what he did was he started collecting under, you know, under the table, and then he started paying himself. So he used it as a scam. Mar-a-Lago, uh, Doral, um, uh, Bedminster, uh, the golf course in Ireland, uh, the golf course in Scotland, he would go there. Now, as I've said before, every president goes on his trips. He takes uh, his whole entourage. That's just part of the part of the process. Okay, it's a little overblown, but that's what it is. So, as a president doing that, nothing wrong with that. That's normal. That's natural. But to put it in your building and then charge the government for all these people to stay in your building and put that money in your pocket. To have a hotel that people will come in, like the people from the Middle East and Saudi Arabia, rent rooms in order to pass gratuity to you, but not get caught and then never show up. Trump found ways of stealing. Now, you can call it any damn thing you want. And if he was a Democrat, it's still stealing. If he was an independent, it's still stealing. I work hard for the money that I make, as do you. On the right-hand side of your paycheck, this jackass is taking that money and putting it in his pocket. That should anger you to no end. But it doesn't. Now, a little context in here, because uh, I, I mentioned it before, but I want to bring it up again. January 20th, 2021, as Trump was leaving and the 30 or 40 people that was out there that nobody else gave a damn anyway, uh, he had had an argument with uh, Ronna McDaniel, Ronna Romney McDaniel, and he told her to... F off. I, I don't know if I can say that, but I just did. And he said that you didn't protect me. You didn't keep me in office. Well, first of all, you lost. Trumpy poo, you lost. If you see this, you lost. Okay, let's get an understanding here. Even though you don't, you don't want to believe it, maybe you are uh, a psycho that you can't figure it out. But anyway, so you argued with her and you told her that you no longer were a part of the Republican Party, that you wanted nothing to do with them. So in the argument, she said, well, then you have to give back the money and all the donor lists. They came to an agreement. He would stay with the Republican Party. They would do whatever he said. But they would pay his legal fees pre-election, all the way back. 
So she agreed to that. And then he pulled a fast one on her. Not long after that, he told the followers, do not send money to the Republican National Committee. Send it directly to me, to America First, one of his super PACs. I made the mistake of announcing on here that he had collected $125 million. I was wrong. He collected 240. With this Mar-a-Lago uh, crap going on, he's now somehow turned it into $300 million. What the hell is going on? Now, as I said, I've run before. So I know what it, I have some knowledge of the, the process. He's not, hasn't committed to running because once he does, all money has to be accounted for. He's going to have to rework everything so he can steal some more. But in the meantime, just so you know, and you may check me out if you like, because it is factual. On this super pact, only one quarter has to be accounted for. The rest he can do whatever he wants with. Now, he made the comment this week, and I bring this up because this is part of tonight's show, is that he said he wanted to pardon the uh, January 6th conspirators. They were just innocent protesters. Well, I, 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 it really amazed me because I watched it and they weren't so innocent. And he tried to distance himself from them. Oh, I, I had nothing to do with that. I, I had nothing. Well, January 6th committee has found out he not only knew about it, they did have weapons. He was in contact with them. Also, there was the war room. Also, there were people on the streets. It was all an elaborate plan. It failed because of one person, the one that they blame the most, and that's Mike Pence. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that now he says he's going to pardon them. Then we find out, now this is another little game that he played, of which he made money for. He was selling pardons. A pardon has to go through a process. The process is a lawyer puts in, a, a, submits a request. It goes to the Justice Department who investigates and presents it to the Attorney General who investigates, signs off on it, and presents it to the President. The President then reviews it with his Chief of Staff. That's who Hans Priebus was, his Chief of Staff. Uh, and then they give the pardon. Well, it turned out Trump was giving a lot of pardons to criminals. I mean, flat out criminals. Now, he made one comment that blew me away the other day, and I know where it came from. I know exactly where it came from. But he said in his speech this past week that he wants, he runs and he gets in office, he wants Democrats and Republicans and independents to vote to shoot drug dealers on the street. Just kill them right there. Now, I'm all against drug dealers, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see where we have some common ground. I, I'm against drug dealers. I don't disagree with them on that. But I'm not gonna sit around and talk about it like the uh, narcissistic, uh, perverted drunk at the end of the bar just running off at the mouth saying something. That's not who we are. That's not what this country is. You get your due process. He is benefiting from that very process. But yet he wants to shoot drug dealers on the street. However, he pardoned four of them and pardoned another one who helped him. He, he, he missed that little detail. So this is really kind of funny how, you know, hypocritical he is. Basically, what he does is he tells people what they want to hear. 
but he breeds hate. He knows how these people are. Now, they brought out what Biden said about the maggots. Maggots. Maggots! That's what I said. Right now, they are mobilizing. Lindsey Graham said they're going to be in the streets if they go after Trump. So there's no law and order with him. None whatsoever. Jared Kushner's father was beyond a criminal. Oh, pardon him. But now Trump has gone and done something so bizarre. I mean, it's bad enough that he steals from you. It's bad enough that he, he uh, was taking names and having the uh, uh, DOJ, Department of Justice, investigating his enemies. One question that you need to ask yourself, how is it a man that has so many enemies and can stand up there and say the Democrats are the enemy of the state, Biden is the enemy of the state, the press is the enemy of the state, these people are the enemy of the state. How can you say that and then say in the same breath, I want to be your president? I want to tell you, you can kiss my ass. Trump, you heard me. If you see this on YouTube, which hopefully you will, that's what I just said. You're, you're, you're ignorant. But what you're doing is you're taking people with you. You're calling for a civil war if something happens to you. What you fail to understand is you stole documents. Not just documents our national security. You would sell us out either for position, for money, or to impress, or maybe all of it. Right now, right now, Trump is being investigated through phone records, through the CIA, the FBI, Interpol, he has passed secrets on to other countries. He'll, of course, deny it. He always does. But what he did working with Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, the Fox News Network, Sean Hannity, uh, Tucker Carlson went over to praise uh, Victor Uban in Hungary saying that that's how our country should be. He was laying the groundwork because Oban has a direct line to Putin. Trump praised Putin for going into Ukraine. Fox News, Sean Hannity, Trump, the Republican Party have all praised Putin for what he has done. I want to know, and I want you to ask yourself this question, do you believe that Vladimir Putin is looking for us to be his friend? If you are, you're a damn fool. Because right after Tucker Carlson did those interviews, Sean Hannity praised the same dictator as did Laura Ingram, as did others, as did Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, and others. They know what Trump is doing. Right now, Trump has told 17 different lies and if you really want to play a game, and I think maybe we should ask Milton Bradley or one of the, um, maybe we can get Nintendo to do it, where they can have a game where Trump tries to take over the United States and each time he tries, he gets a new lie. He's good at it. And then when you're there going, <laughs> and you get in trouble, when Trump tries to take over the Congress, you hit the button and there's another lie. And keep on going and collect them points.
collect that money, I should say. Collect. He, don't, he doesn't go for points. He goes for money. Trump is not as rich as you think. Hey, can you imagine? You know why the NFL, I don't know if you're familiar with the USFL. Not too many people are. But Trump wanted an NFL team for years. And Pete Rozelle and, and all the others said, oh, hell no. We want nothing to do with it. The other owners said, no, absolutely not. So the USFL started. Now, I, I love the USFL, especially uh, the Michigan Panthers, who were the champions one year. And they had a great team. It was, it was uh, a new type of football, new rules, more exciting. And the NFL did eventually take some of it. But what Trump did was he got into it through the New York, New Jersey Generals. And he got uh, Herschel Walker. Now, I think listening to Herschel Walker, I, I, I have to see the game film to see. I got the feeling he played a lot without a helmet on because he talks like it. That's an idiot. He's a good football player, but that doesn't make you a good politician. And you have to remember something. These are people that are putting, that you're putting your lives in their hands. Listen to Herschel Walker sometime. But getting back to Trump, what he did was he destroyed the USFL and started a lawsuit against the NFL, which he won. One of the few cases that he actually won. And Lord Almighty, guess what he got? Three dollars. His thinking was, oh, now the NFL will take me. And the NFL said, hell no. We want nothing to do with you. Later on, the Buffalo Bills came up for sale. That's when he was playing his game of he was worth $14 billion, when in fact he wasn't. And that was verified by um, his attorney, Michael Cohen. He put down 14 million or billion so he could get the team. Hell, Jerry Jones is only worth six and a half billion. Robert Kraft is worth six billion. Trump is nowhere near that. Trump couldn't even use their bathrooms. Trump is a, a, a mouth. What's sad is that people believe the crap that comes out of there. So he destroyed the USFL, which I mean is, is I mean it was kind of disappointing that he did because Michigan had a winning team. But the fact is, he destroyed something because he didn't get his way. And he still didn't get his way. Could you imagine Trump as a, uh, an owner of a football team? And right after the game, when his team lost, it was rigged. It was all rigged. The whole NFL is rigged. And, and Biden brought that out. And he just repeated what Trump has said. And, and what Republicans are saying now. This uh, really blows me away. And I, I, I bring this stuff up. Think about this. Listen to what's being said and think about it. The only way I can lose this election is if it's rigged. Meaning, if I win, it's not rigged. But if I lose, it's rigged. And then the, Kerry Lake, Trump's... Uh, candidate for governor in Arizona was so caught up in it that she declared that the system was rigged. They hadn't declared a winner. They hadn't even voted. And this woman says, it's all rigged. I can tell right now it's all rigged. So when they challenged her on it, she said, oh, you're from CNN. So I know what you are. Really? Well, he knew what you were too. You're an idiot. They haven't even counted the votes, and already you're saying it's rigged. They haven't declared the winner, and you're saying it's rigged. And then you won, and you still say it's rigged. People, look, listen to this stuff. Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker said uh, after the Uvalde shooting, uh, the way he would fix this is that he would look on YouTube and uh, Facebook to find out what these men are saying to these women's 
and then that will help him solve this problem. What? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, you really want to have some fun? Go to the three baboons. I named them last week, and I stand by what I say. Interspecies uh, mixing is something that I think the Supreme Court should look at. But, you know, that's up to them. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and uh, Sarah Palin, thank God, <laughs> and people saw what she was, are baboons. Baboons talk like that. Go through what she says. They have a list of it. You can find it on YouTube. You can bring up uh, Stupid Conversations by Marjorie Taylor Greene. And I mean, it goes on forever. That would be, <laughs> that would be a series. And yet she keeps it up and keeps it up and keeps it up. The stuff that comes out of her mouth is racist, uh, homophobic, disgusting, violent. She says nothing that makes any sense. I don't, I hate to do this, but I, I, I wonder what the hell kind of people are she, is she representing? Is, is that the best that they have there? Because that's, that's, that's sad. Same thing with Lauren Boebert. She's another one that, that the comments that come out of her mouth are so bizarre. And, and you know, I could, I could sit here all day and read them, but we don't have enough time on the show. But I suggest, if you want to have a good laugh and then have a, a, a nightmare that same day, go ahead and read them. Read what they say. Read what they want to do. Read what they want done. Read what, how they feel about people. Have a good laugh. Then at night, because you know that they're in office, that they have, <clears throat> they have your lives in their hands. People, listen to what these people are saying. I'll go <clears throat> now to uh, Michigan. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Dry throat. <coughs> um, I was really bothered by James Craig because, one, I felt James Craig was a very honorable man. And he probably is. I, I really, the fact that he endorsed Trump, man, you, you really cut yourself. I could see you being a Republican. There's some great Republicans out there. But you, of all people, know the difference between right and wrong between reality and bullshit. I would have voted for you. That's how much I respect you and the job that you did in Detroit. You impressed me to no end. But then, like with the others, there were 10 candidates. Five got caught. Now, I don't believe that uh, the candidates themselves um, well, I hope not, that they would tell someone, just go ahead and sign up everybody. But that's exactly what they did. They never bothered to check. Well, when you run, there are strict laws. I know. I've paid a heavy price for some of those laws, being late on payments and that, and having your everything scrutinized. No, they don't play. So five out of the ten did not make it. They went to court. The judge said, no, your, your uh, signatures were invalid, and therefore you cannot run. So that left the last five, one of them being one of the uh, January 6th insurrectionists, and he thought that was a badge of honor. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Not at all. 
But he, he didn't win. But Tudor Dixon praised Trump a little bit more. Now, the fact is, when you praise Trump just to get the nomination, why? Can't you get it on your own? Can't you, with the knowledge that you have, do this on your own? You need him? Trump is, is, is a social disease. And I do mean a social disease. Just the way it sounds. And then you come out with these uh, comments. Oh, wow. The one you said that... Uh, the child, uh, I uh, think she was 13, uh, should have, have the baby because that will bring uh, healing to the family. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at your little girls, you want them having kids? Do you think that's the right thing? Now, what happened to the girl, I don't know how it happened or why. You know, it, it wasn't, uh, it was probably a rape. I'm not sure. So I, I cannot verify that. I will next week as soon as I get a chance to study on it more. But to say something like that, which is equally as bad, if the mother is in danger, one, the husband, what does he do? If my wife is pregnant and she's in danger, choice has to be made. The doctor, he doesn't know what to do now. He doesn't want to go to jail. The mother, what does she do? She just lays there and takes it? She has no, no decision to be made? Come on, use your heads. And I know what being pro-life is. I am pro-life. But I'm not stupid either. There are times when abortion is necessary. And I, myself, do not have the right to tell another person how to run their body. But that's what we're doing. So she has said nothing about the economy. She, it, that's basically all she says. And that, you know, uh, I, Trump has endorsed me and, and I'm all for Trump. You know, that's another thing that bothers me with some of these states and these uh, uh, primaries. Democrats have made comments about Biden. All right, fine. You know, you, you don't have to agree with everything. That's the whole point of our system of government. We can disagree. We can sit down. We can converse. We can collaborate. We can compromise. I mean, all kinds of things we can do and come with the best idea. But the Republican Party, or at least the way they're showing themselves, and they don't have to, right now, their only goal is to praise Trump. Trump is a social disease, a narcissistic, perverted, egotistical putz. He's not brilliant, even though he says he's a very stable genius. And he, he, had, he recognized five words and put them in order. And so guess what? He's smarter than a third grader. He proved that. <clears throat> but then we go to uh, Matt DiPerno, who has already said that he will overturn the election. And the next election, well, you might as well not bother coming out because Trump wins. If Trump runs, Trump wins. And he will see to it, as will uh, Ms. Carimo. Ms. Carimo's husband came out with a good one this week. She's, uh, her elevator don't go to the top. So, <coughs> and she's a professor. I don't know. But uh, these things, 
Are these the people that you want in, in running your, your country, running your life? Because I'm telling you something. Once you lose democracy, and Biden is absolutely 100% on this, once you lose democracy, you have no idea what you're about to lose. You know, I, there was one thing that Trump did that uh, <laughs> he kept bringing up. He had problems with the toilets. He says he had to flush as much as 10 times. Well, that's because you were wiping your ass with secret documents and trying to flush them down the toilet. That's why you had to keep flushing and flushing and flushing. Damn fool. Okay. The Republican side of this group, I, I do want to give one little bit of praise, though. And I think this is something that I, I will start doing more and more. There's people out there that deserve credit. Again, I'm going to give credit to Mike Pence. Thank you for saving our country and putting your life on the line. Donald Trump would have been happy had you been killed. Now you say that he never said that. Well, actually he did. He would have been happy to see Nancy Pelosi ripped apart. Did you know that there was an assassin that was scheduled to do the killings? That came out in January 6th. This stuff came out through Republicans, not through Democrats. Republicans. Andy Biggs, Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, the pervert, uh, the baboon t uh, sisters, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert, Paul Gosar, who has perennial disease of the head. Please, do yourself a favor. Find another dentist. Anyone who goes to him, find another dentist. You can do better than that. Do you want him in your mouth? Oh my God, that's disgusting. Uh, uh, Chip Roy of uh, Texas. Uh, it goes on and on. Uh, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, what a fucking idiot. Ted Cruz is an idiot. By the way, uh, here's a couple of little notes that you need to know about. One, Ted Cruz already has it worked out that if and when his uh, two girls get pregnant, that he's going to take them out of the country to get their abortions. Bet you he didn't tell you that. No, that's probably true because he's too busy going after Big Bird and uh, um, <laughs> Grover and Cookie Monster. And, and Dr. Seuss. Oh, he's, oh, wow, he's, he's really putting down Dr. Seuss. Then you have, oh, here's another fact that uh, hasn't come out yet. And this is one that I'm really going to like, uh, uh, <laughs> especially when it does come out, because um, I got to see how this one plays out. Some of the people that have been uh, passing information to the FBI work for Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis has figured out if he goes up against Trump, it's going to be rough. A lot of money spent, a lot of back and forth. So why not have somebody else take him out? DeSantis, I'd, I'd say that's smart, but it's, it's disgusting too. I would like to see a debate between DeSantis Abbott, Cruz, Marco Rubio. Oh, Marco Rubio. Oh, man. He's, what happened in Uvalde? He's got uh, uh, thoughts and prayers, but he's not going to turn the money back over to the NRA. The hell with that. And he wants to defund the FBI. Yeah, Marco Rubio's out for Marco Rubio. And see all these guys on the stage with Trump. That would be worth the ticket to see all these jackasses. You know, that, that's funny. 
the jackass is the uh, symbol for the Democrats, but the Republicans have more jackasses than the Democrats do. <laughs> so anyway, getting back to Trump and uh, the state of Michigan. Trump lost the state of Michigan. Did you know that one of the uh, machines in Wexford County, was it, is it Wexford County? was found on eBay. It's one of the voting machines. Georgia now has film showing that Sidney Powell sent people in to go through the machines. And yet Trump says it's the Democrats that did it. Trump, do not let him run this state. A lot of states now are talking about seceding. Go ahead. Go ahead. You don't even realize what you're talking about. Getting people all up in arms. My point to all of what I'm saying is this. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to what's being said. Sit down, think it through. Fact check. Fact check. Not alternative facts. Fact check. The real thing. I know people don't like Biden. I like him. He's an honest man. Do I agree with everything? No, I don't. And he's got one flaw that is really, it's, it's, it's a good thing and it's a terrible thing. He's old school, the way it's supposed to be done, the way it was done properly years ago. Not this horse shit now where Republicans voted no on everything. Republicans voted no because they did not want your lives to be better. No to everything. No to jobs, no to uh, uh uh, masks, no to uh, vaccines, no to the uh, Build Back Better plan, no to uh, Medicare, Medicaid, no to, the, even J uh, Rick Scott is trying to take away, uh, along with Ron Johnson, another horse's ass. How do these people get in office? They want to take away Social Security and reevaluate it. Really? Is that what you're going to do? You're damn fools. Medicare, Medicaid, you pay for this. This is your money. This is your entitlement. It's not a gift from them. They don't own it. This was set up to take care of the people of this country. Even uh, Gretchen Whitmer has a plan to uh, uh, take away the tax on elderly so that they can work without being taxed. You're going to have to work because right now Social Security is on a level that every year, four more months, four more months, it's capped off at 70. So where my parents were able to retire at 62 or 65, now it's 70. And for your kids, it could end up being 75. You paid your dues, you paid your time, you paid your Social Security, and then this jackass wants to say, well, I think we need to take it away and reevaluate it. He also made a stupid comment that he criticized Biden to go to Delaware for vacation. Delaware. Who the hell goes to Delaware for vacation? But he made that comment sitting on his yacht in Italy. Rick Scott, shut the hell up. Ted Cruz, please shut up. Somebody take a cork and, uh, I don't know, do they make a cork that big that you can shove it down Marjorie Taylor Greene's mouth? I mean, she can't say anything intelligent. Now, Democrats aren't much better. I agree. There's some out there that need to keep their damn mouths shut. Or maybe, maybe, we need to look at the people we're voting for and pick the best one. Not the one that Trump likes. Not the one that has the most money. 
Not the one that looks good. There's one in, in uh, uh, California. I, I want to say her name is uh, Katie Holmes. I think it's Katie Holmes. This woman is brilliant. She's a single mom. She is brilliant. She has her shit together. When she goes to these hearings, she has her stuff together. And she rips them each time. Those are the people we need. There's plenty of good Democrats and Republicans out there. There's good people. Put them in. Stop with these, these clowns or these sweat hogs. They have no business in there. They're not doing you any good. If you want, create a reality show for them. Take them, put them in a room, and let them talk stupid. Maybe we could call uh, uh, do it on uh, uh, revamping of laugh-in. Or we could call it by what it should be, boneheads. Ladies and gentlemen, your vote is extremely important. This election coming up, these next two, will determine your future in this country. To put it in plain English, you can keep your democracy with all the rules that go to the Constitution. Those are there for you. We pledge allegiance and, and, and support the Constitution because those are our individual rights. The right to speak, the right to have a gun, the right to, to uh, um, come and go as we please. There are rights in the court. But if you go the other way, out of fear, or not paying attention, you'll be able to see the show where uh, Trump gets on there and takes his, the Constitution and wipes his ass with it and tries to flush it down the toilet. And at that point, you will slowly see all your rights disappear. All the way down. When a man says, I want uh, drug dealers shot on the street, I want drug dealers gone too, but not like that. That he will put the press in jail. That he will put Democrats in jail. He even picks out the people that he wants to put in jail. Well, how, do, how come he didn't start with his own uh, uh, cabinet? Look how many of them were indicted. Look how many, I mean, and the, the lies that they tell, my God, they can't even lie straight. Trump tells a lie on top of a lie on top of a lie, and then he tells another lie just to keep his hand in. And people eat it up. Come on, you know better than that. I sit there and listen to that stuff, and it just drives me up the wall. But the worst thing you can do, the absolute worst, one, when you come upon a maggot, and they start spewing that crap, uh, Trump won the election. Well, how did he win it? Well, he had more votes than Biden. How come they can't find him? Well, look what happened in Arizona. They, they did that audit, and Trump said they found that he won. Well, no, they found that Biden had three more, 300 more votes than he did before, and nothing changed for Trump. Well, that didn't matter. Trump said he won. Oh, did he now? Trump said this, Trump said this, I believe this, I believe this. Facts don't matter to them. But what does matter is that if you don't listen, then they mobilize. They have gone after people, and the two ladies from Georgia, they were on the hit list of the assassin for the Proud Boys. Is that what you want? Listen to me, do as I say, or it, it, it seems to me that that happened once before. Pay attention. This is not a joke. This is not a joke at all. Right now, right in front of our faces, they are working out and telling you what they're going to do. Look what's happening in Texas. Women are being followed. Pregnant women are being followed by people who are going to sue them because the governor wanted a police force that 
he could control but not be accountable for, not be responsible for. So did DeSantis. He did the same damn thing. He has his own election police force. Arrested 20 people. Come to find out, he caused it. Now, I want to ask you, anybody, what president, governor, senator, congressman, anybody, needs to have their own police force in this country. Maybe in Russia. Maybe in North Korea. Maybe Viktor Orban in, in Hungary. None of them need their own police force. You are not a king. You are not a dictator. We have rules we follow. If my candidate loses, he lost. That's the way it goes. Then we come together. Obama, when he lost, he came together. So did John McCain. Reagan, same thing. All of them. There's good people out there. Stop going for these jackasses. They're entertaining as hell because they're so stupid. But please don't be as stupid as they are. When you come upon a maggot and they start that, don't walk away. Give it back to them. Tell them to check the facts. Because they won't. They won't check the facts. They're so hardened in it. But when they start saying violence, we'll come with it. Listen to me or else. When a senator says there will be violence in the streets. And then he has a damn nerve to say... The Black Lives Matter. We watched a man get killed in the street. We watched it in real time. Yes, they had the right to protest. Why didn't they protest when Trump came walking down to stand in front of a church with an upside down Bible to try to let people think that God ordained him? God wouldn't have anything to do with him. All these preachers saying that God sent Trump to save us. He's destroying us. He is passing secrets. Uh, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Trump, those people in Mar-a-Lago have seen those documents. Spies have come in there. They know that they're there. They knew it because Trump and CPAC went over to Hungary. They set the stage. They did it clandestine to keep away from Interpol, the FBI. But they will be fought, caught. Then they had Viktor Orban six weeks ago come to Dallas, of which more information was given to him. Will they deny it? Oh, hell yes, they'll deny it. But the CIA has already seen and verified different people have gotten caught all of a sudden in the last year. Things are moving now. You want to know? Ask yourself this question, I, and, and, and I, will, I will meet you halfway. Hunter Biden, if you did something, I hope they ripped the damn computer apart, find out what it is, and let us know. But stop playing this damn game, and the same thing with Hillary Clinton. They investigated her, they found nothing. Trump, you keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. There was nothing there. But you bring it up because don't look at me doing all this over here. Look at her. Look at her. She should go to jail. No, you should be under the jail. But ask yourself this question. Jared Kushner making all these trips over to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is an ally of Russia. We know this. Hell, Biden had to go over there with his hat in his hand begging. That was disgusting, but he had to beg because Trump had already sold us out. He sold us out to Russia, to North Korea. North Korea now is helping Russia. There was no love letter. That was all a scam. Trump is a scam artist, and they scammed him. And the thing is, when I sit here and bitch about it, remember this. 
those scams affect your life. Four years from now, if we become an autocracy, I hope I get one chance to come back on the air and let you know what you did. It doesn't have to happen. Trump is even saying he wants to be president for life. Look what he did with January 6th and the whole thing. Look at the whole picture to see what was going on. This was something that was planned. This was something that was organized. And we have a Supreme Court justice now who was involved in it. Why? Because Ted Cruz was involved in it. He had conversations with Jim Jordan also, Andy Biggs, and uh, John, uh, um, the attorney. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Uh, they all worked for Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas's wife went to Arizona and told them to use the fake electors, as she did in Wisconsin now. What else did she do? When you start bringing people in to do stupid things, these fake electors are going to be investigated. Do you know that they could get a 5 to 14 year prison sentence for that stupid stunt that they did? Trump won't go to jail for it. You know, a lot of the people that have turned on him know that he will throw them under the bus. It's a shame. It makes me wonder what would have happened if Mike Pence had been killed. That's a horrible thought. But what would have happened if it did go that way? Because these people were out of control. Andrew Clyde of of uh, uh, Georgia actually had the nerve to sit there and say, oh, I didn't see anything. You were crying. It showed you on film. You were crying and moving desks in front of the door because you were afraid for your life. And if you had been killed, Trump would have watched it and cheered. Our democracy would have been over that week. That's an absolute fact. That is an absolute fact. Fact, had Pence gone along with it, and he was the key, this would not be a democracy. Now, another question you have to ask yourself. Let's just say Trump runs, and let's just say Trump wins. How does he keep law and order? How does he keep the country together when it, he's divided it so much that some people can't even be in the same room together? How will he do that? What will your kids be allowed to learn? What will your kids be allowed to do? Will some be able to uh, while others aren't? I bitch a lot, but I bitch because this is scary. This is not a joke. I keep telling you that. This is not a joke. You better pay attention. Facts. Listen to what's said. Check it. Check it again and again and cross-check it. Use your phone. Use your computer. The information's there. You'll find it. I have it on my phone. I'm always looking at it, seeing what's going on. And I do watch Fox, too, just so I can get uh, a cross-reference. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please vote. Do not be afraid to vote. Take this serious. This is dangerous. We lose the democracy, all the rest of it goes to hell. No democracy, the autocracy will tell you what your life is going to be.